let's take a look at how to construct a histogram and a frequency polygon for some data. This is something you guys will probably recognize. This came off of uh, quiz 15, I believe. Um, we're given a whole bunch of data. We're talking about a random sample of 30 male college students is selected. Each student is asked his height to the nearest inch. The heights are as follows. And we have this list here, and I think it's clear enough to read. Um, it looks like it's clear enough to read. And what we're supposed to do is construct a histogram and a frequency polygon. You can use this frequency distribution um, if you want to. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But as the person who graded these, the people who didn't use this frequency distribution here tended to get things wrong. So we want to make sure we get it all right. So basically what we're going to do is we're looking in this frequency uh, at this frequency distribution, we want to count how many times 66 shows up in our data. So I'm going to look, I'm looking, I'm looking, and when I find it, I'm going to cross it off. So here's one, and that looks like it. So there's one person who is 66 inches tall. 67, we'll go through, find all of the 67s. Here's one, two, three, and that looks like it. So I'm going to put a 3 in so that I know that I had three 67s in my data. 68s. I've got 1, 2, I have two 68s. Okay, and I'm just filling this out based on the information that I'm given here. 69s. Uh, 1, 1, like just 1, 70s, we've got 1, Two, three, seventy ones. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Seventy twos. I have one, two, three, four. So, oh, I missed one. Five. That's why we cross them off so that we can see if we've missed one. So I had five 72s. Let's see, uh, 73s. I've got running out of numbers here. One, two, three, four, five. 74s. I have doo, 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 one. I've got one. And 75 should take care of the rest of it. Let's see, one, two, and that looks like it. Now, if I've done this correctly, if I added these numbers up in my calculator, I would get the exact number of data points that I had up here. Now, we were told this came from 30 male college students, so there should be 30 numbers here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So indeed, there are 30 data points. So it's good to know that that, that does match up. Now let's make sure that what we've added in here adds up to 30. And let me find my calculator here because I know better than to try and do that math in my head. I will mess something up. All right, so 1 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 plus 3 plus 7 plus 5 plus 5 plus 1 plus 2. And I don't know if you can see that clearly. Let's get it a little bit better in the picture here. And then I hit enter, and it does equal 30. So that means I didn't miss anything, I didn't double count anything. And when we're doing these kinds of things, that's always something that's really good to check, to make sure that when you're trying to keep track of all of this data, that you are actually keeping track of all of it and not doing too much. Okay, so now how to make the histogram. Um, we've got frequency along this axis here. We've got categories along this axis. Our categories are going to be the heights, so the 66 through 75. And you want to be careful that you're not putting them um, directly against this axis here. You want to leave a little room on this side and leave a little room on this side to be able to, um, to anchor your frequency polygon when that comes up. So let's go ahead and start here. We'll call this, let's 
let's see, how many of these do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. We'll call this 66. We'll call this 67, 68, 69, 70. Hopefully you can see that. If you can't, trust me, I'm just writing numbers in order here. I know that can get kind of blurry sometimes. 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, and those were all of the categories that we had. Your frequency, a lot of times, I think, well, not a lot of times, I think it's best to go one higher than your biggest number so that we know that we can keep track. So I have everything from one to seven, so I'm actually gonna count up to eight. So we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we made it all the way up to eight there. And then, what are we going to do? Label these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay? And so now it's just a matter of filling this out. So 66, we said went up to one. So I'm going to draw my block going from 66 up to one. 67, we had three of those. So that block I'm going to draw to the height of three. 68, we had two of those. That I'm going to draw to the height of two. 69, we had one of those. I'm going to draw that to the height of one. And notice here, my categories are touching. Um, a lot of people, when they did this on the quiz, they left spaces between their categories. And for the histogram, you actually want your categories to touch. If 66 is right next to 67, you want it to be right next to 67 in your histogram. So make sure that you are making your categories touch each other. Um, 7 went back up to 3, or 70, I'm sorry, 70 went back up to 3, 71 shot up to 7, um, so we'll go up to 7 here, 72 went to 5, 73 was also 5, 74 is 1, and 75 went back up to 2. So this right here, this, this uh, series of bars with the categories labeled, um, this is the histogram. So when someone asks for a histogram, I think a lot of us think of this as a bar graph. It's very similar to a bar graph, but this histogram is um, is what we're looking for when we ask for that. But we need one more piece here. We need the frequency polygon. They're asking for that also. How do we draw a frequency polygon? Well, what we do is we start by going in the middle of each of these bars and putting a dot. So I'm just going to go in the middle of each one of these and put a dot. And this is for doing the frequency polygon. But this is something that a lot of people forgot. You don't want to forget this because you will get marked off points if you forget this in a testing situation. You need to anchor your frequency polygon on that category line too. So make sure you get a dot on this side and a dot on that side. And that's why we left all of that extra space. We left space here and we left space here just so that we could anchor this frequency polygon. And now we just connect the dots in order. So I'm going to go from left to right, connecting my dots. I'm just connecting them, connecting, straight line, connecting. And you want to keep your line straight. You don't want to curve them. We're not trying to make a smooth, curvy transition. We actually want to see these, uh, these angles in between everything. We want this to be a polygon, and that's what this is. So in red is the frequency polygon. So I'm going to go through the process one more time just to make sure quickly that we understand what's going on. In order to create or construct this, uh, this histogram and frequency polygon, I took the data that was given and I put it into this frequency distribution. And all that was was going through the list of numbers and seeing how many times each number showed up. 
I double checked to make sure that when I added all of these together, I got 30 because there were 30 numbers. So I needed to make sure that the number of things that I had in my frequency distribution matched the number of things in my data set. And then when I had that taken care of, I set up my categories along the bottom. So I have the 66, 67, 68, 69, all of these heights along the bottom on the categories, leaving room on either end so that I can anchor my frequency polygon when I need to. And then I also labeled the frequency here. And the highest frequency I had in my frequency distribution was 7, so I tacked an extra one on here just so that we could see that this kind of stops at 7. So you would add, you would go all the way up to 8 on your frequency, and you will stop at 7 because that's your highest one when you're making your, your uh, tallest category here. So I went and I made the rectangles that matched up to the heights in my frequency distribution and then to, that was the histogram, that's what's in pencil here, and now in red I put dots in the middle of each of the rectangles, right at the top of each of the rectangles in the histogram, and then put one dot on this side, one dot on that side to anchor it, and then I just connected the dots from left to right. And that's how we construct a histogram and frequency polygon from a data set.